Welcome to our next episode, let's build a model railroad from scratch. In the last episode we have unpacked the ICE2 starter set, it contained the basic tracks to build this nice looking track oval. And also two turnouts. Let's have a look at the track plan from the instruction manual, here it is. Um, that's what we have set up last episode, all the tracks we have laid out for the ICE2. The topic for this episode is how to control turnouts digitally with the mobile station and how to connect signals and how to use several locomotives on one and the same course. I brought myself a helping hand, the Jan Christich from Göppingen from Merklin is back live on the show. Hello, good to see you. Hello everyone. He will stay connected during the whole episode and assist whenever we need a professional. We may not get the chance to interact with you 100% during the show, but we will answer all of your questions later on in the comment section. If you have any questions about model railroading or model railroad setups, ask it in the comment section and follow us during the whole season uh, on the next couple of weeks. Our aim is to create a complete model railroad landscape on this tabletop. Over there I'm imagining a mountain, right there I want a train station, I'd like to add some more material uh, to these two turnouts, I, want to like to, I would like to illuminate them and the whole scenery should be with, uh, for, for instance, movable figures which can be controlled through the mobile station as well. That's my goal for the next weeks and I'm sure the two of us can manage this task. Is that right, Dejan Christic? I'm sure of it. I'm sure. One more information from the last episode. We have talked about the M tracks. Some of you might still have the old metal tracks at home. We had a very good time with them. We played a lot with it and enjoyed the unique sound it made. But to be frankly, we recommend to use the C track and get rid of the M tracks. The starter sets contain the new and pretty C tracks with much better driving characteristics and a better flexibility. You could combine the two different tracks since transition parts exist, but they don't really work that good together. And the starter sets contains an abundance of C-tracks. Another fact that we have talked about, uh, where's the old container? In the old days, we used this kind of transformers. That's the kind from my childhood. In fact, that's not a real transformer. Nowadays, the transformer isn't called a transformer at all. Uh, looks like this, a so-called mobile station from Merklin. It's connected to this track connector box and with this mobile station we can control several locomotives at the same time on a single course. This was not possible with the old transformer since you could only steer one locomotive per electric circuit. Uh, let's do a short test drive, check out if the ICE is still running with sound and everything. Let's get started. Now it's running. I stop it briefly. A second locomotive is supposed to be added to it. Uh, here you can see the turnouts. The ICE will take the inner course by default. I acquired a second little model, this little train, this farming train right here. I put it on the tracks. If you want a perfect result, you can use this track assistant device, but uh, switch to the stop mode beforehand. Now we can put this little locomotive on track as well. Now we add a small wagon to it, a freight wagon, that's the farming train set from Merklin by the way. Um, there is a huge variety of different starter sets, let me show it to you. Uh, you can find them for all kind of different themes, uh, let me show it to you on the screen right here. There is a firefighter train, a firefighter starter set, a Danish freight train, there's a building block train that you can combine with your favorite building blocks. Here's a larger startup set containing two mobile stations. There's a train from the 70s as well. So an abundance of starter sets if you want a steam locomotive. There's also a starter pack uh, with a steam locomotive as well. I choose the ICE2 starter set and a small farming train. There is the second wagon. If I press the stop button on my mobile station now, the train should be recognized automatically any minute. I push the stop button. The ICE2 is already displayed, it's recognized already. Now a little symbol with the lettering MFX is flashing. That's the name for the decoder format um, of the digital decoder by Merklin. Now I can press the shift button in order to choose the second locomotive. The mobile station just recognized my class diesel locomotive, that's exactly the one right in front of me. I can turn on the flashing light on the top right here, you can see it shine, and now we can start this train as well. 
So now I'm getting into trouble with the depot and the people working there, the train attendants, or what are they called again? Not train attendant. Um, uh, what it is it, Dejan Christic? Who are the people who decide which train is allowed to go where? What are they called? Traffic controllers? Traffic controller is correct. You might slaughter me in the comment section for not knowing that, but it's okay. So traffic controller is the word, right? Yes. So the traffic controller would say, no, Michael, there's an ICE already on the tracks. You are not allowed there with your tiny farming locomotive. Now, this is quite fun to play alone, but since it is much more fun to play together, let's hook up another one, another mobile station. There's one right here. You can always get a second mobile station. I kindly had one sent to me by Dejan Christic. Let's unpack it together and start the fun together. You should come over, it would be even more fun. You can connect this one to the same track connector box. So first question here, how many boxes can I buy? How many mobile stations can be connected? Two mobile stations can be connected directly to the track connector box. There's the possibility to add a hub in order to run up to four mobile stations on one railroad system. So perfectly for the extended family. Well, maybe not the extended family. If four people want to play together, take four mobile stations and have some fun with it. Very nice. Uh, let's take off the protective film here. Okay, now let's unroll the cable. All right, mobile station. We have talked about the mobile stations before. You can save several locomotives in one mobile station. This mobile station recognized my ICE2 and my little farming train. In case I have more locomotives or in case some friends come over to play, I can save even more trains in the same mobile station. Is that right? How much room is there for how many locomotives? You can save 40 locomotives in the mobile station. You can use them whenever you need it. If you add a second mobile station, it's still 40 locomotives. The second mobile station is subordinate to the first one. It's the slave mobile station. Master and slave, just like the computer hard drives from the past. That's the track connector box here with two slots here. The first mobile station is on the left. The second one is on the right hand side. So the first is the main mobile station and the second one, it is starting up right now, is the subordinate mobile station. Well, that's not necessarily the case. Okay, I just told you wrong. Let's see. At least it's working. There is no information about any trains in here. Uh, how can I transfer the train information from this one over here? In this case, like I just explained, this one should be the slave mobile station. Now you have to enter the locomotive menu in order to transfer the locomotives from the master mobile station. While we're talking, one could see that the mobile station acquired the information about the ICE train. I didn't have to do anything, so everything worked automatically. That's very handy. Yes. If that hadn't been the case, simply fetch it from the master. So like you just explained, press shift and then press, uh, no, rotate to the right and then press the, uh, the plus symbol. So I can only add a new locomotive with the master, that said. What I'm supposed to do, only master. We had an update and since then you can find up to 40 locomotives on your screen. So it is likely that the information has been transferred already automatically. If everything happens automatically, I'm happy. The less I have to do, the better. In a nutshell, in our last episode, we have learned how to add a locomotive to the main mobile station, press shift and rotate in order to add a new locomotive. This can be used to automatically add the newer locomotives with the newest decoders or if you have an older locomotive, last time I brought this second hand bought beautiful BR103, the owner told me the exact address which I can use. The owner told me the exact address which can be used to manually add the train. Uh, we do have a tutorial uh, in our Merklin YouTube channel showing how to manually add a train like this. And if you know the product number, if it's an original Merklin train, you can also enter the catalog number and the locomotive is easily recognized. So that's not a problem. All right, Dian Christic, let's do the following. You might be far away, but let's imagine you are here beside me and we're playing together. 
I'm using the first mobile station and choose the class diesel locomotive and on the second mobile station I choose the ICE2. Now I can use these two mobile stations, feels strange to use them both at the same time, to steer both trains in a different manner. Um, I will let the class train go back at the same time, I let the ICE go forward. So now they both move in different directions. I can let this one shunt a little bit while the ICE moves slowly into the train stations. With every mobile station I can perform a different task. Let's accelerate the ICE in exchange, the class has to stop for a moment. While the ICE is turning rounds, I'll let the class slowly follow the ICE, without any screaming from the traffic controller. Oh no, oh no, no, I guess that can happen while playing. All right, now it's allowed to follow on the ICE. Let's see if it's fast enough. Nice. Two mobile stations and with any one of them you can have fun with. I let the class go back again a little. The ICE is in the train station. Now I can work this turnaround manually. Now the class can enter the second track. That's the way to play together. That's a typical playing situation, two trains on a single track, including a side track. Fun for the whole family throughout the holidays. Well, we have two mobile stations, we can easily extend the whole thing, because these two turnouts can be shifted digitally, no need to do it by hand. Dejan Kristic, what do we need to do that? In order to work the turnout digitally, the first thing you need to build in is a turnout mechanism. So basically an engine. In addition, we need a decoder in order to communicate with the turnout. As if by chance I have both items right here. First the electric turnout mechanism and the decoder for installation. Let's unpack both of them. I will start with the turnout mechanism. The other day I read a discussion about working turnouts digitally and analog. No, it was driving digitally and analog steering. I guess that was about those wires uh, we see right here, the orange wires. It's a wire for a control desk. They go together with the Merklin control desk. So if you prefer to control manually on a control desk, I got one right here, then you can easily uh, use this one for signals. You can simply press the buttons here, for example, green or red. You can use something like this here, but since we have one or rather two of these nice mobile stations, it makes sense that one of us is uh, working the turnouts and the other one controls the train. That's a fun way to play. One takes care of the signals and the other one is in charge of the trains, isn't it? Yes, that's one way to go. I have unpacked the wrong turnout mechanism. This one is empty. I have used this one already. There's one, thank you very much. My colleague just handed over the right turnout mechanism to me. Okay, all right, here we are. The packaging looks a bit different. One is called Starter Pack, the other one is called Merklin HO, but there shouldn't be any kind of difference, should it? Yes. This one has the number 492, uh, the other has the number 491. I think it doesn't matter. Yes. Nice, I get to unpack the boxes, the famous unboxing. The instruction manual is right here. Here's the only difference between the two. The Merklin HO contains a wire for a digital multiple decoder. You can directly connect up to four turnouts. Uh, we will have a closer look at this in the next episode. Right now we don't need to do that. This box also contains a wire to connect the turnout to a digital decoder. We will do this together, Dejan Kristic. Let's do something handicraft together. What I do need now is some space on the table and tools. Let's see what I need, but first make some room. Let's take aside the small locomotive. Let's switch to the big camera. Makes it easier for you to watch my thinkering. This might take a few minutes, carefully take down the ICE, if it falls down on the ground it will break and that would be a shame. Okay, alright, we will keep them together. I will remove one of these turnouts, there are divergent turnouts and straight turnouts. Left turnouts and right turnouts, basically they are all the same, uh, you always add the same turnout mechanism and the same digital decoder. Let's tidy it up a bit uh, for you to see. We screw this mechanism in on the side of the turnout. Let's see where we can do this. I get an overview. I, rec I recommend to work the turnout by hand. If you do this, you can easily find the right pink, which is connected to the black turnout mechanism.
This just fits perfectly. You should be able to see now that the turnout can be worked smoothly with the turnout mechanism. Next step, we screw in the two screws here and here. You will find the screws in the packaging as well. Also, inside the box are several plugs and gray little things. You can use them to pimp the whole thing a bit. It should look like a cable duct afterwards or like a concrete or metal masking. Is that right, Dan Kristic, to make it look very realistic? You mean on top of the turnout? Mm -hmm. Yes, you can remove the manual lever mechanism and replace it with those gray tabs. I do not recommend that. It is always good to be able to work the turnouts by hand. Ah, okay, very interesting. I picked three screwdrivers because I usually pick the wrong one. Uh, let's see which one of them fits. Looking good, this one as well. What about this size? Mm, yeah, well, that's uh, that one is the best. Uh, take the screw and start screwing in the first one. That's fast and easy. The first one is done. Now take the second one. All right, and now the turnout mechanism can no longer fall off. It is firmly attached to the turnout. At least that's what I thought, but the screw is not tight yet. Uh, now it's perfect. Perfect. In the next step, we will digitalize the whole thing. Uh, we could already connect the whole thing with a big turnout decoder called M83 in order to combine up to four turnouts on one decoder. But I prefer when it's all hidden and cannot be seen. That's what I need for my model railroad system. So instead, we use this one here. Now, um, where are my scissors? Uh, let's open it and have a look at it. More wires in here. The great advantage of an installation decoder is that you don't see any wires. They're all hidden inside the track. Also, brown and red are already set. So you can make sure that the turnout always works in the right direction, not in a reversed manner to the pole. That is not the case for the M83. You have to link up the wire, like it just said, and it could easily happen that you have to switch wires again if something doesn't work correctly. I have no idea what you were talking about. This is still way too complicated for me. I know a little bit, but I'll act stupid for now. So it is really easy here. I'm taking this cable out of the packaging and plug it right here on the side. I did it the wrong way around. Additionally, I'm using the wrong wire. That's the one I need. The green has to go to green, okay, but it is still best to do the wiring first. It's much easier to see. The green wire must be plugged into the turnout mechanism in order to connect the digital decoder. I'm behaving really stupidly right now. Now the digital decoder is still loose. We can place it right next to the turnout mechanism, but first we need electricity. Without it, nothing will happen. Now plug the white wire into the digital turnout mechanism decoder and now we can click it into the place on the track. Here are three loose wires, a brown one, a red one and a yellow one. I remember, I remember from last episode, Dejan Christic, B stands for the track current, German Bahnstrom, and is colored red. So let's connect the red wire to this little letter B right here. It fits, I hope you can see it. The brown wire over here will be connected to zero over there. At least the yellow one, which is longer, that's good, because I need this wire on the other track. And the yellow wire also connects to B, doesn't it? Correct. If you imagine zero to be no electricity, then yellow will connect to what refers on the track to track current, which means you can connect it to B. So yellow also refers to B. Yes. So basically we have already digitalized our turnout. We cannot work it since it's not connected, but as soon as it is connected to the rest of the oval, it will be supplied with electricity. So now on this decoder, um, we can see a tiny black box with small switches. Dan Christic, please explain what this is for. It is necessary to give the decoder an address, a house number, so to speak, in order for the central station to recognize and control the turnout. Using this mouse piano, 
that's what we call it, you can adjust the address. You have to use a code which is described in the instruction manual that you can just take over. Address 1 means in this case switch the first lever to position 1. Uh, I can only see 9 or 10 numbers on here, but that does not mean you can only connect 10 turnouts to it. Depending on which levers I move, I can change the coding. Uh, we were talking about the instruction manual. It's right here. If I find it, there it is. Uh, let's take it out uh, of the packaging. All right. Um, here it is. You call it house number and address list. In this instruction manual, you can find it. Which page is it? Uh, should be somewhere here. Different languages look like it is on the last pages. The glossary. Wow, so many addresses. Here we are. So in the left column, you can find the addresses. One, two, three, four, and so forth. Next to it, you can see which level to move up or down. In order to assign the first address, simply move the first lever up. In order to assign the second address, only move the second lever up. And in order to assign the third address, move both up, the first and the second lever. I'm just remembering my school days, learning about the binary system and stuff like this. That's right. That's what you have to know about decoder addresses. Let's make it really easy. I'll show you how you don't have to do anything. I'm lazy today. We will leave the address on the first position. We don't have to do anything. Well, I guess I have to change one thing. I have to move lever one up. Take a look here. Simply move the lever upwards with the screwdriver. Now the turnout has the address number one. What is number 10 good for again? Or can I leave it be facing downwards? You can leave it as it is. A professional user might need more than the 360 addresses which are available. <laughs> good lord, 360 turnouts. Are you crazy? I leave it that way. But I could use the number 10 to change the protocol from Motorola Merklin to DCC. Is that the idea, isn't it? That's right. As the professional model builder knows, two different protocols exist. One is called MM, Motorola Merklin. The other one is called DCC. No need to remember, we will leave everything on default. The professionals need that knowledge if they want to use more turnouts. Much more, much more, much more. All right, we have digitalized our first turnout. And if I only want to go one way, that would be enough. I can now move one turnout, the other one would simply stay untouched. Okay, let's connect the tracks again. Power supply is still off, mobile station is turned off uh, with the stop button. Let's see if that works. Looking good, the tracks are connected. We do not use the ICE, I will use the class locomotive instead. I put it on the track. All right, let's use the track assistance. If we do it, let's do it right. It sits right on it. I can choose either one of the mobile stations. Look, the locomotive is already going. We can work the turnout now. There are these buttons here. This one with the white locomotive symbol. And this one with a white turnout symbol. If you press the turnout button, a keyboard is displayed showing our addresses. Here's number one and number two. If you press these buttons here, you can choose either address 1 or address 2. By pushing here, address 2 and 3 are displayed. Push again and address 3 and 4 show up and so on and so on. How many addresses are there? What did you just say? 320. Wow, 320, that's a lot. I will stick with the number one and number two for now. Uh, let's put this on the test if we did a good job. Uh, when pressing either the green or the red button, we should hear a clicking sound. Indeed, a clicking sound can be heard. It's coming from over there, it's coming from my turnout. I'll move the whole thing for you to see. Uh, you should be able to see it right now, any minute now, upper left corner. Yeah, I'll put aside the ICE to prevent an accident. There is the turnout. No need to work it by hand anymore. I can always work it by hand if I want to, but I can just easily work the turnout with the mobile station. Simply by pressing the buttons. I can choose either track 1 or track 2 for my train. We let the class locomotive come closer. The train travels on a straight line. Color green or G stands for straight way. Color red or R stands for divergent. Let's choose R for divergent. Next time the locomotive should take the other track. Alright, here it comes. 
it should take the other track. Okay, we can modify that even further. One mobile station will take control of the turnouts, the other mobile station will take control of the ICE or the class locomotive. To have even more fun, we can add a signal. I have prepared something right here. I have a color light block signal. We could install that right in front of the turnout. So if the right track is not available at the moment, the class locomotive has to stop at the site. But this is a topic for the next episode. We will do that some other time. Uh, what did you say, uh, Dian Christic? Yes, that's a bit more time consuming. So it's best if we take more time for time that. Time consuming? Not at all. <laughs> digitalizing the turnout was a piece of cake. All right, let's do the following. I will prepare and digitalize the second turnout for our next episode. Episode that we will learn how to build signals, then I would like to, uh, to start planning the model landscape. You told me before you have quite some experience when it comes to model landscaping. I want a big mountain over there, build a train station right here and also a sidetrack. You have mentioned also lightning current. Um, that topic is still complicated for me. What has to be connected, how and where, electricity for the illumination, for the tracks and trains, when is there too much electricity in the system? We will talk about that in our next episode, building a model railroad from scratch. Thank you for your help, Dejan Christic. You're welcome. Let's enjoy this little train that is making its rounds here. Goodbye, everyone. See you next time.